Well, good morning, everyone. Nice and cool in here. Um, thank you for joining us for the 2016 National Medal for Museum and Library Services Award Ceremony. The National Medal is our nation's highest honor for libraries and museums, and today we recognize the extraordinary work of 10 outstanding museums and libraries from across the nation. And we also celebrate the valuable role that these institutions and all museums and all libraries play in our communities. They are true catalysts, and in their own way, each of these 10 have made a difference leaving their surrounding neighborhoods and communities better because of their presence and outreach. This year's medalists include a museum dedicated to sharing the history and culture of indigenous people, a library that has transformed its services to meet the needs of large immigrant populations, so much so that it's been dubbed La Biblioteca Milagro Hacer, the miracle-making library, I love that phrase, an academic library that has become a gateway to knowledge for its community and its partners, and a science museum that has promoted hands-on science interaction as part of a country plagued by high poverty, low achievement scores, and dwindling resources. We are honored to be able to work with all of our medal winners, and we salute them, each and every one of you, for the services that they provide every day. This, 22nd, this is the 22nd year of the National Medal Ceremony, and we are proud to have the members of the National Museum and Library Services Board with us today. Our board members are unique in that they bring passion and leadership to the Institute of Museum and Library Services mission, and they help strengthen the educational and cultural life of our country. They play an integral role in helping us to select our National Medal winners, and we're very grateful for their service. Could I ask our board members to stand, please? Thank you. Thank you so much for your dedication and support. We also know that behind our winners, behind each one of them is a dedicated team, some of whom are here today with us. I'd like to recognize the board members and public officials who have traveled here in support of our winning institutions. Would you please stand? Any board members and public? Thank you. I'd also like to recognize our partner in chronicling the story of our medalist, StoryCorps. StoryCorps is a national nonprofit dedicated to recording, preserving, and sharing the stories across America. They will visit each winning institution to document the stories from the community. Since 2010, StoryCorps has conducted more than 1,000 national medal interviews in communities across the country. And all of the interviews are preserved at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. Today we have with us Ms. Robert Sparkman, the CEO of StoryCorps. Robin, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to recognize a group of people who have worked very hard to make this day possible through many, many hours of hard work reviewing nominations, setting up review panels, and then liaising with our finalists and our winners. This fall, IMLS will kick off celebrations for its 20th anniversary, and we have been able to support museums and libraries for so many years because of a hardworking, lean and mean contingent of employees. So please join me in thanking and recognizing our dedicated employees at IMLS. So my final thought I'd like to leave you with today is this. This year's winners represent all the libraries and museums around the country who are committed to providing truly engaging experiences for their communities, however you define community. They are, in many cases, our community's unsung heroes. In preparing for today's ceremony, we encourage community members from locations representing our 30, 30 finalists to share their stories on social media of how their local institutions have impacted their lives. 
The results were heartwarming and astounding. Hundreds of stories poured in from Americans, young and old, all eager to share the story of how a local library or museum had opened doors to powerful and even life-changing experiences. So today we honor these 10 institutions, but I encourage you all to continue to support the work of libraries and museums across the country, just like those we recognize today. And now our next guest has been a true champion of museums and library and the critical role that they play as catalysts for community engagement, revitalization, and sustainability. She has also graciously hosted this ceremony for many years, and so it's my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce Mrs. Michelle Obama, the First Lady of the United States. yourselves. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the White House um, as we award the 2016 National Medals for Museum and Library Service. Uh, I want to start by thanking Catherine uh, for that wonderful introduction and for her extraordinary leadership as well as everyone from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Uh, I know she gave out all the accolades before I came out, but I want to join in uh, and, and thank everyone for their hard work, their continuous hard work, their dedication, and their passion for this issue. Uh, and of course, I want to recognize our 10 incredible awardees and community members who've come here today from all across the country. Uh, you all are doing such inspiring, innovative, and impactful work, and we are incredibly proud of everything you all have been doing, so uh, enjoy, enjoy this moment, and don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to be in this room and hear that, but yeah, they're all like, yeah, yeah, you can do it. You're gonna make it up these stairs just fine. <laughs> uh, and I have to tell you, as someone who lives in a museum and whose husband will soon be opening uh, a, a library himself, as you all have heard, uh, I've been thinking a lot about uh, what you all do. And I've celebrated this event with you uh, uh, a number of times over the years and all together since 2009, IMLS has recognized 80 museums and libraries in 32 states. And as we honor your accomplishments today during my family's last year in the White House, uh, when we're just beginning to reflect back on our time here, uh, I am struck by how important your work has been for so many of our efforts these past seven and a half years. Um, as I've said time and time again, when we first got to the White House, one of our goals was to make sure that we opened up the doors to this house as wide as possible to folks from all different backgrounds, particularly to young people who wouldn't normally have the chance to come into a space like this. And we've tried to uh, showcase as many great American art forms and cultural legacies as possible. If you've been keeping up uh, over the years, we've hosted performances and workshops on everything from Broadway musicals. This room has been converted in so many ways. We've had a Broadway stage here with uh, kids and performers singing and dancing, everything to jazz and, and country music to spoken word poetry. Uh, not just Hamilton, yes, they performed right here, <laughs> but other spoken word artists as well. And the fact is that your work and the work of libraries and museums across the country has actually helped make so many of these events possible, whether you understand how you've done that or not. Time and time again, it's our nation's libraries and museums who've sparked the imaginations and encourage the interest of so many of our nation's most accomplished authors and performers. And I'm thinking of the great writers who basically took up residence in their library when they were growing up, or the great artists who were inspired by uh, an amazing exhibit they saw when they were a kid. Uh, and this isn't just true for the kinds of folks who perform at the White House. Uh, we've heard this from so many people whose lives have been affected uh, by a great book, 
or a powerful piece of art, mine included, uh, that has transformed the way they see the world and the way they see themselves. That's how we know that in so many communities, our libraries and museums don't just preserve and promote our cultural treasures, they also enrich uh, and enlarge our lives. Uh, and that's really one of the most powerful things that you all do each and every day. This year's incredible awardees are a testament to that truth. Uh, just take the example of, of Lynn Meadows Discovery Center for Children in Gulfport, Mississippi. I understand that when local leaders and community members came together almost 20 years ago to create their state's very first children's museum, they were determined to directly engage every kid and family in the region. So they restored a vacant school building. And after they opened the exhibits, they also set up summer acting camps and music workshops and family cooking classes and anything that would bring the community in. Uh, and when Hurricane Katrina washed away the entire first floor, they didn't get discouraged uh, because they knew that their community needed them more than ever. Uh, instead, they rolled up their sleeves and they cleaned up the damage and reopened even more determined to carry out that mission. And if you want to know the kind of impact they're having on young people in their community, I just want you to consider the story of a young man who I just met briefly, uh, Brandon Spann. Um, Brandon, where are you? Oh, there you are. You're right before my very eyes. The handsome young Brandon first showed up to the Discovery Center as part of a summer boys and girls club program. And he was a shy, I understand, sixth grader uh, who wasn't that excited about school at the time. <laughs> but then they got him on stage and everything changed. All of a sudden, you couldn't help but notice Brandon because he was a star in the theater. I wish you were performing today, but we're not gonna force you to do that. <laughs> and then he turned that stardom into being a star in the classroom too. And last week, Brandon became the first member of his family to graduate from high school. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be the first member of his family to attend college as he pursues a degree in drama. <laughs> yeah. I just love those stories, and there's a story like that uh, with every one of these uh, awardees. That's the kind of impact our museums can have, and that's the story of so many of our libraries as well. Um, another one of today's awardees, the Brooklyn Public Library, is a perfect example. They're one of the largest library systems in America with 60 branches, uh, almost 4 million books and periodicals, and nearly 9 million guests last year alone, uh, and they have hosted tens of thousands of public events to reach folks at local senior centers and homeless shelters, to provide literacy programs for new readers and young children, and to mobilize a network of 2,000 volunteers who provide everything from computer courses to citizenship classes. Now, some of us might not think of a library as a place to take a course on citizenship, uh, but luckily for a woman named Kim Best, someone else who I met, very giggly, Kim, <laughs> right there. That's exactly how the Brooklyn Library System uh, worked for her. See, Kim's family arrived in this country from Guyana in 1981, the year I went to college. But uh, it took over 30 years for her to realize that even after her mother was naturalized, Kim wasn't a citizen herself. Fortunately, Kim had grown up in the Brooklyn Public Library system, so as soon as she found out they offered classes, she signed right up. She spent weeks drilling the questions with her teacher and classmates, and last October, Kim became one of our newest Americans, and she is here with us today. Proudly. Kim is also the mother of a 10-year-old son named Ibrahim, who wants to be an engineer when he grows up, I understand. 
And Kim knows that he can't achieve that because these are her words. This is what she said. She said, I know the library is here for him, just like it's always been there for me. Good stuff. <laughs> day after day, year after year, our nation's libraries and museums are here for our communities. And at the end of the day, you all don't measure your impact by the number of books on your shelves or pieces in your exhibits, but by the young people you inspire. Uh, the lives you transform, and the impact you have every single day on your communities. So to all of our awardees here today and to libraries and museums across the country, uh, I again, and for the last time in this official role, I thank you all. I thank you all so very much for everything you do. Uh, I am proud of you all individually. I'm proud of the work that these institutions do in our country. Uh, and I can't wait to see everything else you continue to achieve in the years ahead. So don't get tired. <laughs> we need you working. So with that, let's get to the awards. Thank you all so much and God bless. First, we have Brooklyn Public Library of Brooklyn, New York, the fifth largest library system in the United States serving 2.5 million residents. Accepting the award for Brooklyn Public Library are President and Chief Executive Officer Linda E. Johnson and community member Kim Best. <laughs> Brooklyn Public Library is known for its robust outreach services for all ages and stages of life, including new Americans. Today, 46% of Brooklynites over age five speak a language other than English and 50% of Brooklyn households speak a foreign language. To best serve the changing community, the library has become focused on transitional programs targeted at these populations. Materials about citizenship are available in all 60 branches, as well as services to aid with test preparation for citizenship courses. <laughs> Collections can be found in over 126 languages, and English as a second language classes serve some 650 students annually. These offerings are what community member Kim Best credits for her successful completion of the official citizenship test, saying that Brooklyn Public Library gave her the confidence to excel. <laughs> Columbia Museum of Art of Columbia, South Carolina is revitalizing the city center and redefining the art museum as a bustling social hub of its community. Accepting the award for the Columbia Museum of Art are Executive Director Karen Brocious and Community Member Joyce Rose Harris. <laughs> Poet and social political activist Joyce Rose Harris joined the Columbia Museum of Art the first day she walked in. For Joyce, the museum spoke to her immediately and filled a void. It offered a connection to a poet community that she had struggled to find since moving seven years earlier and a source of inspiration for her writing. In fact, her first two published poems were responses to the Columbia Museum of Art exhibit, Chemistry of Color. She loves attending the museum's wide-ranging collections, programs, and exhibitions, and has shared her poems at the museum, standing next to the work that inspired them. Joyce says there hasn't been another place artistically within South Carolina that has had as much of an impact on me and my art. When Lynn Meadows Discovery Center for Children of Gulfport, Mississippi opened its doors in 1998, it was Mississippi's first children's museum. Since then, the institution has remained dedicated to expanding a child's world through shared learning experiences. Accepting the award for the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center for Children are Executive Director Cindy DeFrancis and Community Member Brandon Spann. <laughs> Keeping in mind the significant high school dropout rate in Mississippi, the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center for Children developed the Wings Performing Arts Program in order to extend reach beyond the center and into the local schools. As part of the program, the staff works with families to draw up contracts that work to ensure the student's commitment to education. The contract's goal is to prioritize schoolwork through the Wings Performing Arts Program. 
If grades drop or problems arise, the child must take a temporary break from the program. Brandon Spann has been a part of this program since he was 11 years old and credits it for his successful graduation from high school last week. <laughs> Madison Public Library of Madison, Wisconsin has been a steward for education, literacy, and community involvement for more than 140 years, connecting visitors to programs and services, community resources, and each other. Accepting the award for the Madison Public Library are Library Director Greg Michaels and Community Member Rob Franklin. <laughs> Rapper and spoken word hip hop artist Rob Franklin left his job and moved to Madison to focus on his music, but it didn't take long for him to exhaust all financial options. He took odd jobs and spent full days at Madison Public Library, searching for ways to continue pursuing his passion. The library's artists and residents introduced him to the free classes and equipment at the library's media lab, where Rob was able to make his dream a reality, recording music, creating music videos, and designing posters and album artwork. After mastering the offerings of the Media Lab, he began volunteering to provide media instruction to local students and expanding outreach to an at-risk youth at nearby juvenile detention center. He taught audio engineering and video production classes, providing access to technology that otherwise would be unavailable to the children. Rob says, being able to bring joy and self-expression to kids who've lived tough lives is bigger than any record I could ever sell. Mid-America Science Museum of Hot Springs, Arkansas is an award-winning state-of-the-art science museum and home to over 100 hands-on science installations. It is Arkansas's only Smithsonian affiliate. Accepting the award for the Mid-America Science Museum are <laughs> Executive Director Diane LaFollette and Community Member Casey Wiley. After graduating college, Casey Wiley took a position at Mid-America Science Museum, where she had volunteered in her youth. At the museum, she brought innovative science programming to children at 15 schools across Arkansas, including low-income schools where children had experienced minimal exposure to science. Until joining the museum staff, Casey had been disillusioned by the education system, but she credits working at Mid-America Science Museum with reigniting her passion for teaching. She is now a fifth grade science teacher pursuing a master's degree in teaching, and she has brought the museum style approach to teaching science in the classroom with her every day. Casey shares, if I hadn't been at the Mid-America Science Museum, I never would have become a teacher. The experience of being a hands-on educator at the museum reawakened my passion for working with children and helping them make discoveries. North Carolina State University Libraries of Raleigh, North Carolina, serves as a gateway to knowledge for the local community and its partners. Accepting the award for North Carolina State University Libraries are Vice Provost and Executive Director of Libraries, Stu Susan Nutter, and Community Member, Marsha Gordon. After 14 years of teaching at North Carolina State University, Marsha Gordon was able to breathe new life into her approach to class research projects by pairing with NCSU libraries in their cutting edge technology, such as their large scale digital interactive displays. NCSU's new Hunt Library resources and staff emboldened her to begin assigning multimedia projects to her film studies graduate classes. For the Shooting Wars project, students brought moving images, archival material, audio, and text to the screen for an engaging presentation about the nature of American military conflicts. The project provided an amazing learning experience for the greater university and public audiences. She is now on her fifth multimedia project working with the librarian and its resources. Marcia says, <laughs> The North Carolina State University Libraries have really thought about what it means to be a 21st century library. It's a perfect combination of offerings that help students learn and express intellectual and creative flexibility. <laughs> Found 
Founded in 1850, Otis Library of Norwich, Connecticut sits in the heart of downtown, serving as a community center and a collaborative engaged partner. Accepting the award for Otis Library are Executive Director Bob Farwell and Community Member Bassam Gayed. When Bassam Gayed moved to the United States from Egypt to be with his wife, he began frequenting the library, learning everything he could about American culture and history. He credits the library's free comprehensive citizenship resources with preparing him for the test to become a US citizen. Bassam also took a reference desk job at the library, working with people a few hours a week, and after several years was appointed the Multicultural Services Coordinator. Because he was the sole Spanish-speaking employee and understood the immigrant experience, he was able to develop targeted programs, services, and materials to help other immigrants adjust to life in the U.S. and flourish the way he had. He made foreign language material easily accessible for children and adults, expanded the library offerings, and focused on helping American-born library users better understand world cultures. Bassam notes, at the library, if we teach kids from a young age about other cultures, that there are other people who think, live, and worship this way, it makes a difference. It makes a better world. Santa Ana Public Library of Santa Ana, California has served the community for 125 years, supporting the area's large immigrant population and bridging the digital divide. Accepting the award for the Santa Ana Public Library are <laughs> Director Heather Folmar and community member Victor Gudiel. When his family was homeless, Victor Gudiel's trip to Santa Ana Public Library for a youth group introduced him to a special community. From that night on, he was hooked on the library, soon going almost every day after school, befriending the kind library staff and taking a part-time job there for the duration of high school. The library encouraged him to try new things, helped with his homework, and was vital in showing him how to apply for college and financial aid. Participating in the library's Seed to Trees Digital Media, which teaches digital literacy, Victor discovered his passion for film production. He is now studying production at UC Santa Cruz. Victor says, I didn't think I was going to go to college. That wasn't a reality until I started coming to the library. It exposed me to a lot of things and what I want to do with my life. The Chicago History Museum of Chicago, Illinois is the city's oldest cultural institution and has served as a hub of scholarship and learning, inspiration, and civic engagement for more than a century. Accepting the award for the Chicago History Museum are President Gary T. Johnson and community member Joyce Chu. Joyce Chu, a first-generation American and college graduate, spent as long as she can remember in her father's local bakery in Chicago's Chinatown neighborhood, watching the community come together, share stories, and talk politics. The culture of Chinatown, particularly the strong connection between the Chinese community and food, was brought to life when the Chicago History Museum interviewed her and her father for the My Chinatown exhibit, spotlighting local Chinese Chicagoans. The exhibit, gave her a unique lens into her own family's history while helping others in Chicago better understand the culture and heritage of the Chinese community. The project was conducted around the time of a devastating fire at a local Chinese museum, so the exhibit not only reached a new audience, but it also filled an unfortunate gap left by the destroyed artifacts. Joyce says, it's meaningful that the My Chinatown exhibit is able to preserve the stories of our parents and grandparents for future generations so they can get a glimpse of what it was like to be one of the first groups of Chinese Americans to immigrate to the city. <laughs> Tomaquag Museum of Exeter, Rhode Island is the state's only Native American museum empowering indigenous people and serving as a bridge to promote better understanding of the Native community's needs, history, and culture. Accepting the award for Tomaquag Museum are Executive Director Lauren Spears and community member Christian Hopkins. <laughs> 
Recent college graduate Christian Hopkins found his direction at Tomaquag Museum. Growing up, he worked as a docent, attended classes, tutored youth, and became heavily involved in the Narragansett performance art forms, including flute, drums, and dance. Christian was empowered by the educational programming and cultural dialogue the museum offered. Learning about his Narragansett culture and getting involved inspired him to embrace his identity as a member of the tribe. He credits the museum for helping him find acceptance and pride in his cultural heritage and helping him to flourish. He grew to be a champion Eastern war dancer and became invested in the history of his tribe. He hopes one day to make films that spotlight and share the Narragansett culture and history with the public. Christian says, Tomaquag played a huge role in my life. It instilled a strong sense of pride, and without it, I wouldn't be on the course I am, graduated from college and looking at graduate school. Well, I think that's all we have. <laughs> but uh, for my, my final uh, ceremony with you all, uh, it has uh, just been a great pleasure uh, to get to know you, to get to know your institutions, uh, to be able to shine a big bright light on the work that you do, uh, and the amazing community members whose stories uh, really bring home uh, the impact and relevance that, that you have on so many. Uh, so I, I just urge you all to keep up the great work. Uh, it is so desperately needed. Your institutions are a place for people to come and, as I said, find their voices, to find inspiration, and sometimes it's the only institutions they have in a community. So uh, uh, please, please keep up the great work and to everyone out there, continue to support these institutions. They are the lifeblood of this country. So with that, I'm going to leave you. Um, I wish you all a wonderful day. Stay cool. Uh, and, and again, God bless you all. Thank Take care. You.